This year, everyone seems to be talking a lot about Linux or swapping from Windows or Mac OS to Linux, especially Windows. But how do you even get into Linux? Where do you start or how should you start approaching Linux? That's what this video will be about. I will talk you through how I got started personally with Linux and started approaching it to now end up daily driving it for a little over seven months. Over the years, as we all know, Windows has started to become very bloated and buggy and just a mess in general. From the disastrous launch of Windows 8 all the way up to Windows 11 with Copilot and the Task Manager and File Explorer breaking or being very slow, all that stuff. And Windows starting to become a uh, agentic OS. Not to forget how bad just a simple search function has gotten on Windows. There were in the past no real alternatives besides like switching to macOS if you didn't want to use Windows. So we all kind of just got used to dealing with the quirks and annoyances and how to work around them over the last decades. Personally, I didn't know that much about Linux until like a few years ago. I, I would say one or two years ago really because I do watch a lot of some Ordinary Gamers videos and as you might know he talks a lot about Linux and shows tutorials on Linux for example and that way I slowly started to get more and more interested in Linux especially for the gaming side. So with Microsoft announcing officially that Windows 10 was gonna end on October 2025 at the same time I wanted to start planning out my new build for a PC that could run newer games like Doom the Dark Ages with like forced ray tracing and all that jazz and also be able to edit like 4k footage for example like a beefy editing and gaming machine. So that's when I decided it should finally be time for me to swap to Linux. So yeah on my old PC back then I obviously didn't just go ahead and install Linux and just wipe my Windows drive that would be insane. I actually started out using virtual machines and I would actually recommend everyone to do that if you're even slightly interested in Linux because that's like the most safest way to just test lots of distros very quickly like Time-wise, obviously, you don't have to install the whole thing on your hardware and that takes time. Setting up a virtual machine is like pretty quick and you can just test your way through different desktop environments, different distros. And obviously here I would recommend also going with a well-supported and like one of the top distros. For example, stuff like Linux Mint, Zorin OS, those are supposed or pop os as well those are supposedly beginner friendly which basically just means that they come with lots of stuff out of the box uh, so you don't have to like tinker around as much which i could figure most people actually want and also if you break something in a virtual machine it's basically no problem you could basically delete your whole root folder and break your entire system but it's in a virtual machine so you can just boot up another vm and just start over again so yeah in this part of your journey at the beginning i would probably just suggest you boot into lots of different distros test different desktop environments if you're more into like a windows layout you could for example go with a kde plasma or in Linux Mint's case, the Cinnamon desktop environment. If you like macOS a lot, you could go with something like GNOME desktop environment. I'm not really a big fan of that, but it's an option. That's the beauty. You can just test around and that's probably the biggest part of this. Remember, you're trying out a whole different operating system with its own quirks and annoyances. But for example, with Windows and macOS, those have quirks and annoyances as well, but we've just gotten used to them and learned how to work around those issues for decades now so just keep that in mind and if you run to a brick wall just remember go you can always go back to windows for a bit and it's in a virtual machine anyways so you're probably you're on windows anyways <laughs> if we would have been using linux for like decades and we would all want to swap to windows if it was the under, other way around it would also be just a pain the ass in a few aspects well 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 now that you've played around with virtual machines and maybe found a distro or desktop environment combination that fits your vibe it is now time to put your distro to the metal aka install it on real hardware 
At this point in my personal journey, I started to install Linux Mint on my old PC, which already used Windows 10 and I had two HDDs, one SSD where Windows was on and the newly put in M.2 SSD. So I petitioned a bit of space from my M.2 SSD because I only use it for storing games from Steam. I gave it around 200 gigabytes, I think, for all the installation and stuff and maybe installing a bit of software and smaller games so I could test gaming a bit because I wasn't gaming in a virtual machine because of GPU pass through and all that stuff. I just wanted to get a good look at the look and feel of different distros in chapter one. So at this point in my journey, I download the Mint ISO from the official site, download Berliner Etcher to make a bootable flash drive with the ISO I just downloaded, booted my PC from this drive and installed Mint on the space that I gave it on my M.2 like I mentioned. After installing it, I then proceed to download some stuff like Discord, Steam, VLC, Media Player, Firefox was actually pre-installed. I think the default browser installation for all Linux distros, but oh, maybe not all Arch, you can like customize however you want. Let's say most distros. Because I didn't give Mint, like I said, that much space on my drive, I only installed smaller games like Binding of Isaac and just tried to get gaming to work from the stuff I saw in videos, like setting the Steam compatibility layer to Proton 10, 9, Proton Experimental, whatever. I usually use Proton Experimental and change it if a specific game requires it. But that's a topic for another video. And to be honest, most of it just worked. All of this just works. It's not, I'm not kidding. With everything kind of installed and me playing around a bit with now GPU actually connected to the, to the operating system, not like in the virtual machine stuff I did, I also, when rebooting my system, got to meet the grub menu, which is basically just a menu when you boot your PC, so it basically gives you the choice of what OS you want to boot into. And in this dual boot installation on my old PC, I also started following a YouTube tutorial that I will link on screen right now to just customize the cinema desktop a bit. I actually posted pictures of that when I did it on my Blue Sky account. If you want to follow me there, I occasionally post there. So I basically did this dual booting and just testing around watching, for example, Netflix or YouTube and just getting some of my browser behavior onto Linux and all my gaming stuff and Adobe Suite stuff I was still doing on Windows. Because my PC was like fully set up for Windows, that old one, and I didn't want to bother moving everything because I was still kind of unsure if I really wanted to make the switch and I was just slowly getting into Linux and getting used to Linux. So yeah, I was doing this on and off for a few months and uh, now we get to the real deal. So in this part of my journey, it is now April of 2025 and this was the month where I built my new PC. The parts arrived, I built it on a nice Saturday and decided to put Linux Mint and Windows 11 in a dual boot on it. Like I mentioned in that video, which will be linked in the top right as well, because I decided to go with a 9070 XT graphics card from AMD that basically released like three or four weeks before I built my PC, uh, it was so fresh that a stable distro, like for example Linux Mint, wasn't on the newest kernel for driver support and stuff, so Mint was not recommended my graphics card at all and there was I believe no way that's beginner friendly at least to work around that issue so I went with a Windows 11 and Fedora 42 KDE Plasma Edition to make it look and feel more like Windows and not GNOME desktop environment that Fedora normally comes with like as a standard edition which looks more like Mac OS uh, yeah in a dual boot I went with that instead because it's a rolling release on like the newest kernel so if you have like more bleeding edge hardware modern hardware also for example products that just released 
I would actually recommend going with something like Fedora or I believe Cache OS, which is Arch base, is probably also pretty easy to use. That was something that was recommended a lot under my last Bazite video where I turned my old PC into a Steam console basically. Maybe that's also a good starting point, but that could be a topic for another video, like for example comparing Cache OS and Bazite. Bazite also pretty beginner friendly I would say to install but yeah in general I would for this part of your journey recommend going with a dual boot now installing it on real hardware that's what I did now uh, because I am dependent <laughs> I guess on uh, because of my own free will sadly on the Adobe suite for example or if you want to play in your case maybe anti-cheat games that aren't supported because of the anti-cheat on Linux, you can go with dual boot and have Windows 11 as a backup for those specific programs. But other than that, in your case, that might be different and you could just go for it and fully replace Windows at this point with a distro of your choice. Also, something I talked about in my free months update for using Linux. I also discovered some new programs like Pika Backup for backups. Backups are very important. Very big point for this video, hopefully. Backups. Keep backups somehow. If it's on an external drive, make system backups with like Pika Backup, for example. Anything, okay? Just save your most important data somehow. <laughs> But also for Minecraft, for example, this is the first time I used a third-party launcher, not the official Minecraft launcher, with, which has a Linux version, but I figured out Prism launcher with being able to make multiple instances, downloading and updating mods very conveniently is just a better option, to be honest. If you want me to make a video about all the like programs I use now or at least have installed because I think they're very interesting, I can make like a 9 month or 12 months, a whole year of Linux uh, update video like I did with my 3 month update for using Linux. But yeah, that's basically how my journey started until current day which is the next chapter for this video with some basic recommendations and TLDR. So, I am now at the point where, like I mentioned in the intro to this video, I'm using Linux as my daily driver for over seven months. With all the good and bad things that obviously come from swapping to a whole new operating system. Now, for you, you could just take the first few chapters of this video and start your own journey. Like, start a new virtual machine, slowly start dual booting and maybe in your case actually fully switch over to a Linux distro and desktop environment of your choice. If you ask me for some recommendations, I would really recommend starting like I did in virtual machines because now you probably have Windows set up, everything is working hopefully, and you can just download a program to start a virtual machine test your way through some beginner friendly distros that basically come as a good package out of the box for you as a new user. Obviously like the top candidates for that are like I started with Linux Mint, very popular distro, well documented, that's a thing I would recommend you choose. Don't go with like Hannah Montana o OS or the weird North Korean one. I don't think that's well documented. <laughs> uh, but for example, like Linux Mint, Pop OS, Zorin OS is supposed to be really good. I have not looked into that yet, but I would be interested to just look at it in a virtual machine. If you want to see my first reaction to Zorin OS, leave a comment down below. And that might as well also be a video for setting up a virtual machine. If you're crazy, you can go with Arch, but I wouldn't recommend that for someone that is starting out with Linux. I would say you probably want just a good, well-rounded, out-of-the-box experience for whatever suits your needs and your vibe, like your taste. For example, I don't really like the Mac OS type desktop environment with the layout and stuff. I'm more of a Windows desktop environment layout type of guy, so I didn't install Fedora with the GNOME environment, like their standard workstation uh, ISO you can download on their website. 
but I went with the KDE Plasma edition that released officially like as a one of their big editions right next to their workstation uh, Gnome edition right before I built my PC so well done Fedora team you won me over with doing that the timing was perfect and yes it's it's like mint with its cinnamon edition more like a windows type uh, layout with the taskbar bottom and bottom left there's like the start menu and all that jazz so yeah well documented and stuff is all good but we all don't want to just read i know uh like i mentioned a lot throughout the video the best thing you can do is probably watch youtube videos uh, for example, for Fedora, I had some startup issues that I didn't, because I didn't install like RPM Fusion. I could have basically found that out by watching, for example, like a beginner's tips or tips and tricks for when installing Fedora video. There's a lot of those for basically any distro on YouTube, like mini tutorials. I didn't know why I didn't do that. So I basically just went ahead and clicked and Google searched through all the menus in Fedora and web searches and stuff like that. I mean, you can do that. You can also just go ahead and customize the whole desktop environment even more or just use the out of the box one. It's all up to you because this is the beautiful thing about Linux. You have a lot of choice and power in this case. There's also a lot of responsibility, obviously. I mean, makes sense. This is your personal computer, not Microsoft's computer. I also, uh, over the last few months, found a pretty cool website if you want to learn more about just the basics of Linux, how Linux works, like really works, how your PC works. I guess you could say the website is called labex.io slash Linux journey. And I started doing a bit of those categories and you learn a lot about terminal commands, like navigating through the terminal. If you're interested in that, that site I think is a really good resource. Uh, other than that, like I said, YouTube videos. Best thing to ever exist. <laughs> so in conclusion, I found out through my journey basically over these last seven plus months that if you kind of just want to talk to friends on discord do some office work with for example LibreOffice or open office or you use the microsoft office stuff in the web browser the, those versions and in general you do a lot of browser based work and entertainment and stuff like that and you play games that are not blocked by the anti-cheat for linux even though they would technically run on linux and they they do run, but just not with the anti-cheat, because fuck uh, some game publishers, lol. In this case, Linux is more than capable of replacing even your Windows installation. But if you're like me, for example, for very specific Windows-only programs, like the whole Adobe suite, or like I mentioned, bought games on Linux because of the anti-cheat, that's why I would consider, and I think it's still the best thing to install a dual boot on your PC and start to move over everything step by step to Linux as much as you can. It basically, in, the, in my case, creates like a personal and a work environment for when I want to use the Adobe Suite in Windows. And there's basically nothing else on that installation besides connecting my SSD with the footage of these videos. and than working on those videos. So there's basically nothing else on that installation. And I would really recommend that. Because also the biggest point for the end of this video, if something goes bad on Linux, or you encounter a problem with something that you want to use or need to use, and you can't figure it out or figure it out fast enough on Linux right now, but you know how to do it in Windows, then you can just make it easy for your brain and just go to Windows for that specific thing and then go back to Linux. And maybe if you have some more time, figure out, hey, how could I have done this thing I was doing on Linux? I have like a weekend off now, let's find out. So yeah, if there's anything else you want me to talk about, Linux related, for example, uh, just leave a comment down below. I will be reading every single one and probably answer every single one as well. And maybe some of you more experienced Linux users have some more tips for beginners in the comment section down below. But that's it for me now. Like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.